All right, so I've had a number of questions about this assignment, and a lot of people are a bit confused as to where to start. A number of times people have said, look, I just don't know where to start. So what I would do, and I mentioned this very briefly in the in the workshop on, on Wednesday night, is I turn to the end of the assignment handout, page three, and look at the second last section where I talk about the sections that you should include in the report. And I'd essentially structure the report like this and structure the report before you even start to write it. Now within each of these sections, um, this is basically what you want to do. By the overview of the analyses, basically figure out what analyses are required to address those four research questions on page one of the, of the handout. Once you've done that, you can then start working on that section. Now I'll give you a hint. It will be either correlation regression, mediated regression, and or moderated regression. Okay, and um, several of these will be used. So it's only the topics that we cover in modules three and four where you should draw your analyses from. Now there's a number of ways you can actually answer the first two research questions. And there's no real right or wrong way of doing so. For example, you might wish to use correlation. You might wish to use regression. Now you can perfectly answer the first two research questions using either correlation or regression. So whichever one you choose um, is completely fine as long as you do that method in the appropriate way and interpret the results in a way that's consistent with, with what we've taught in this unit so far. Now clearly the primary purpose of this assignment is for me to really be satisfied that you've mastered moderation and mediation. Therefore, the bulk of the assignment should be about conducting a moderation and a mediation. Okay, so that's sections three and four. Now, in order to actually figure out how to do this, we've developed extensive handouts that firstly go through moderation, and then we have two handouts for mediation that you should certainly use for the assignment. Okay, the examples we've covered in class and also the examples we have on Blackboard are very similar to the examples or very similar to the research question you need to address in the assignment. Okay, so what I would do for, firstly for the moderation is go through the material on Blackboard, use the handout designed to help you with moderation, become aware of the types of things that you need to do and what the interpretation actually means, and then do the same thing with the assignment data set and the assignment research question. Then you should do the exact same thing with the um, with the path analysis. Okay, so go through the material we've developed for Blackboard, uh, master that, and then have a go at, at the assignment. Okay, and and really, as I said in class the other night, even though this assignment has a broad scope, okay, we want you to do regression, correlation, mediation, moderation. It looks like a lot of work when you look at it all together. But when you break it down bit by bit and focus on addressing one research question at a time, all the tools that you need to do this are all on Blackboard. So even though it might seem overwhelming, break it up into small steps like I have on the screen now, and it's, it's actually not that difficult. It will take a while to actually do, but the, each part is, isn't actually that difficult. And as I've said a number of times, if you are finding it difficult, feel free just to come and make an appointment and, and see me in my office. Now one thing on this screen that I haven't yet commented on is the assessment of the descriptive statistics. Now anytime you do a quantitative type report, you will need to give the readers some kind of indication that the data from the sample that you're looking at is consistent with the data that's been used in similar research. Okay, so if you had means for a, a variable that was that was twice as large an average as what previous researchers found, it indicates that there's something a little bit dodgy about either your sample or your data collection procedure. So the reason we collect descriptive statistics is really just to describe the sample and show that our sample is comparable to other samples that have been used to um, test similar research questions. Now when you do quantitative methods that look at generally at regression or, or, or mediation or moderation, part of the descriptive statistics is the correlation analysis. Okay, so you need to include, um, well firstly, alphas, 
the Cronbach sulfur, which is an indicator of the reliability of each of the scales that you look at. You need to include the means and standard deviations. You need to include the, um, the actual correlations then in that particular table. Now if you forget how to do this, then look at the other video that I made. The video is similar to this one for the first assignment and that's where I take you through how to actually create that table or calculate the statistics required for that table and then actually putting that table into APA format. So that's what you want to refer to to actually generate that correlations table. Now another thing I want to point out is that when you do the assignment or when you write the assignment you should focus on what's in the marking criteria. Now most marks are allocated to moderation and mediation therefore the bulk of your assignment in terms of word count should be based on moderation and mediation. Okay, the overview of the analysis section might be a couple of paragraphs. The descriptive statistics again might be a couple of paragraphs as well as the table. Um, and then the bulk is moderation mediation. The summary of results, which is the fifth section, should um, only be a paragraph at most. All right, so what I'll do now is I will take you to SPSS and talk about some specific tips for conducting the moderation. Okay, now this is the data set for the assignment and the data set's currently in its raw form. And basically anytime you collect data for a project or using questionnaires or, or for something similar, your data set will probably resemble this. You'll have some basic demographic variables such as the organization someone is from. And on this data file, we call this org ID. Their gender, coded as one versus two, male versus female, age, and then our focal variables, okay, the variables that are involved in our hypotheses. Now in our raw data file, we simply have a set of items as opposed to composite scores. So the first step really, when you have a raw data file, is to go from your item scores, which comprises the raw data, to your composite scores. Now if we look through our data set, we can see that we have a number of items that we use to measure a number of variables or constructs in this study. So this first one here, cont1, cont2 and cont3. This was a number of questions or three questions designed to measure organizational control. Then we have 11 items that measured negative affectivity, three items that measured job satisfaction and so on. We want to go through the data file and calculate the composite scores for each of these variables. Now what I'll do is I'll do an example for control and then you can do a similar thing for the rest of the composite variables in the data set. Right, so the first thing we need to do is go to transform, click on compute, then we need to think of a name for our composite variable. We might simply call it control. So we type that into the target variable box. We then find the three items that comprise control and simply sum them by putting them into the numeric expression box. So cont1 plus cont2 plus cont3. We click OK and go back to the data file and you can see that um, we have this new variable called control. Now when you do the path analysis you can use this variable control you can put this straight into the path analysis. But when you use this variable in the moderation, you can't use this version of the variable. The reason is because unless we mean center our IVs now moderator, then we might have problems with multicollinearity. Okay, so the second step that you need to go through after calculating all of your composite scores is to mean center your two variables that are going to be your IV and your moderator variable. Now if you choose control to be your moderator then you should mean center that score. So I'll quickly show you how to do that. But before I do that I'll just quickly say that to mean center a variable essentially what you're doing is you're subtracting the mean value from all of the observations in that variable. Now calculating the mean centered version of a variable is easy to do in SPSS. The first thing we need to do is find out the mean for that particular variable. So we need to find the mean for control. Okay, so again we simply go to analyze descriptive statistics frequencies. We click on our new variable control, put that into the variable box, 
click on statistics, we then select mean, continue and OK. And we can see that the mean for that variable is 8.54. Now to create the mean centered version of our control variable, we then go to transform, compute, we think of a name for our mean centered variable which can be mc underscore control. We then go down and select our original variable control and we simply subtract the mean which is 8.54 from that variable or from all the observations in that variable. We'll click OK then have a look at the data file and again we'll have this new variable in the data file. And like I said before this variable here simply represents this variable except it has the mean subtracted from each observation in that variable. And we do this again as I said before in order to eliminate the chance that we're going to have multicollinearity in our data set. Now when you're doing moderation it it's actually easy to make a mistake when you calculate the mean centered version of a variable. So what I'd like to do is just simply double check that I've actually done the right thing when I've calculated my mean centered variable. One way to actually double check I haven't made a mistake is by calculating the mean of this variable here. If this is truly a mean centered variable then it should have a mean value of zero. So let's have a look. Again I go to um, analyze descriptive statistics and frequencies. Rather than looking at the mean of control, we'll look about at a new variable, mean centered control. Click OK. And we can see here that our mean value is 0 0.0014, so very close to zero, indicating that we haven't made a mistake. OK, so that's basically all you need to do to set up the data file in SPSS in order to run your moderated multiple regression. If you want a bit more help, with creating those composite scores, creating internal reliabilities, or so alpha, and also running the correlation and analyses that you need in order to generate the table that's required for the assignment, then I recommend that you look at the video that I created a few weeks back on creating a table after you've conducted a factor analysis. Basically the table you'll need to include in this report or in this assignment is virtually the same table that you would have created for that um, factor analysis table, obviously with different variables and, and different values for those variables. But it's a very similar process. Okay, so just to reiterate, once you've set up your data file like this, we'll look with all of the composite scores and the mean centered variables for your IV and your moderator. That's when you get the moderated multiple regression worksheet and you follow the steps in that moderated regression worksheet and find out whether or not you have a significant interaction term.